This is WKYT This Morning. Good Thursday morning to you. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Bill Bryant. Kentucky mornings start right here on WKYT. What a wonderful time it is to be in the Commonwealth, yes, you know? It the is. Kentucky Oaks Derby. Tomorrow That's and right. The Derby Saturday. Cinco de Mayo today. It is Thursday, May 5th. Now at 6, a murder investigation in southern Kentucky. We're tracking down details of the overnight crime. Also this morning, find out why a Lexington mother's trip to Wendy's has led to her being thrown in jail. And check your tickets. The Powerball jackpot just keeps growing. And no surprise here, more showers in the forecast for today, especially west of I-75 earlier this morning as you're traveling. It's going to be a wet go at it. We're at 58 degrees there with a few showers. So a chilly day today with rain, but I promise you this, it gets much better the next couple of days. I'm going to show you that in your forecast coming up. Thank you. There's a lot going on this morning. New this morning, we've learned state police are investigating a murder in southern Kentucky. Few details have been released at this point. We keep making calls. We do know that police are still looking for the killer. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk with this crime tracker report and the latest info we have. Mark? Good morning, Bill. And this morning, the search is still on for the shooter after a 30 year old man was found dead inside his home. The coroner is identifying the man who was killed as Shane Mills. He was shot to death around 9.30 last night in a home on Trace Branch Road in the Walker community, which is near Barberville. Overnight, police looked for evidence and went door to door, talking to neighbors, trying to find someone who knows what happened. Beyond that, there is still a lot about this murder case that we do not know yet. We have been speaking with investigators this morning, but they're still trying to figure out who shot Mills and why this shooting happened. Of course, we're continuing to call state police for updates, and as soon as we get any new information, we'll bring it straight to you. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. New on WKYT this morning, the Red Cross is now helping a Montgomery County man after his home caught fire overnight. It started about 1.30 this morning on Virginia Avenue in Mount Sterling. Crews say the fire started in a bedroom, and there is smoke damage throughout the home. No one was hurt. The man who lived there is now staying in a hotel, at least for tonight. An apartment manager called police after hearing a child crying and not getting an answer at the door. What police found inside landed a Lexington mother in jail. New this morning, WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is live to explain exactly what happened. Caitlin? Good morning, Michelle. She says she left her son home alone while she went to Wendy's, and now she's expected in court later today. 23-year-old Lexington mother Radiance Parker is accused of abandonment of a minor after she left her 23-month-old child home alone. She told authorities she left the baby boy at home to take a trip to a fast food restaurant. Police responded to her home after reports from the Cross Keys apartment manager that he heard the child crying. He had knocked on the door and when there was no answer, he went inside the home and found the boy home alone. That's when he called police. Authorities went to the home on Monday. Parker didn't contact police until one day later and didn't contact her social worker until the following day. Now the 23-year-old said when she she got back from Wendy. She actually saw police at her home, but didn't come forward because she didn't want to get in trouble. Now she's expected here in Fayette County Court later this afternoon. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Thank you, Caitlin. Family members say a Taylor County woman saved a relative's life during a shooting. Police say uh, Shanitra Vaughn was with her cousin, her uncle, and a friend, Brianna Washington, at a home in Campbellsville over the weekend. They say William Calhoun showed up at the home and began shooting. Washington was shot and killed, but Vaughn's mother says Vaughn used her body to protect her uncle. She pushed him out the way. She took those many bullets. One died. She saved another. They didn't get one bullet. And she took every one. And she said, why me? Vaughn's mother says the shooting broke her spine. Police charged Calhoun with murder and assault. A man wanted in a Franklin County kidnapping case has now been arrested. Dre Valentine is charged with kidnapping and impersonating a peace officer. Police say he and a former constable, Thomas Banta, posed as police officers and interrogated a 17-year-old for hours after accusing him of stealing a safe. Banta is facing the same charges along with promoting prostitution. 
A former bookkeeper is accused of stealing more than $150,000 from the Lexington Hearing and Speech Center. Jan Malden is facing fraud and theft charges this morning. Police say she stole the money between 2009 and 2015 and used it to go on vacations and for limousine rentals, among some other things. She was laid off in December when her position was outsourced, and a short time later, police say a routine audit showed money was missing. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are shifting their focus to the general election. Trump is already talking about possible picks for vice president. Clinton dismissed the presumptive GOP nominee as a loose cannon. Democrat Bernie Sanders says he still sees his own path to the nomination, despite trailing far behind Clinton in the delegate count. Sanders campaigned in Lexington last night. Now, speaking to more than 5,000 voters at Heritage Hall, the Vermont senator called for a federal minimum wage increase, free college tuition, and universal health care. He encouraged the crowd to help lead the country in a political revolution by voting in Kentucky's May 17th primary. Students at Transylvania University have come up with a way to remember a classmate who died in an accident. 22 year old Katie Stewart died in March after falling from an overlook at Raven Run in Lexington. In a Facebook post, Transy students uh, are saying that the senior class there will now raise money to build a pavilion in Stewart's memory. If you would like to help, we have information on how you can do that at WKYT.com. The time this morning is six minutes after six on WKYT. As you're up and at it here on your Thursday, well, the Powerball jackpot has grown even larger. Yeah, there was no jackpot winner last night in the drawing, but it increases to a prize that is estimated $415 million. Now, while that's not chump change, it's a far cry from the $1.6 billion Powerball. You may remember that shared three winning lottery ticket holders who won that prize back in January. Now, that's the largest ever jackpot draw in the world. No one has won the full jackpot since March 2nd. The next Powerball drawing is Saturday night. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It is the 40s outside early this morning, low to mid 40s. I don't see many 30s. I don't, we didn't expect many 30s across the region. And when we travel off into your afternoon, look for these temperatures to rise. 10 to 15 degrees, and that's it. I mean, we're talking about some very chilly air sliding on in here. Typically, we're in the lower 50s, not anywhere close to that early this morning. Then throw in some rain, throw in some wet conditions there on the roads as you're traveling this morning, up 75, 64 BG Parkway. That's your best bet. I'm actually seeing a few showers. None of this heavy. None of this is going to cause major issues. But just know you could have a passing shower or two. And then as you work anywhere east of I-75, it's really northbound. Is these continue to travel south and southeast? So Frankfurt still getting in on the action. Yeah, a couple of sprinkles here and there. Then you work your way down 150, traveling through Washington, off into Boyle County. Uh, that's a way to go at it this morning. So a couple of showers here and there. As we go through your day, you're going to have that shower chance. But remember. You'll get some breaks in the action here and there. It's so one of those days to mow that grass now that you're able to in some spots. Yeah, it's a possibility. I still haven't been able to do that the past couple of days just because of just because of that rain. So the grass is getting higher and higher the more water you get on it. A few showers later on this afternoon too. Off into the evening. Let's talk about the big news. Tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. You got the Oaks Day, you have the Derby Day, then you're talking about Mother's Day. Let's break it down for you. Oaks Day. Awesome day. I mean, you're talking about dry conditions for 90% of us. Much milder conditions, too, right around 70 degrees. Really good day on Oaks Day. That's tomorrow. Then uh, a possible rain chance far eastern Kentucky. And when I say far eastern, I'm talking about Pike County, Martin County. Uh, work your way off into to Floyd County. Those here. I mean, you go even any farther east, you're talking about West Virginia. So far eastern Kentucky, only a slight chance of rain there. Then Derby Day, highs hit the upper 70s. You're talking about a great feel. 80% of the day is going to be extremely nice. So really nice day on Derby Day too. However, we got to watch closely. Evening, evening and nighttime storms for the northern zones. So not so much the south, not so much central zones during the daylight hours. It's the northern zones, 8 p.m. to midnight is when these storms move on in. If you speed that up a few hours, it'll cause some problems. But as of right now, I don't see many problems out of that as it travels on through. Hope it works out. You know, a lot of folks uh, cross our fingers. plan a lot around, yeah, the, around the Derby, right? Yes, Maybe you could win the Pegasus Parade today. Well, that you know, would be nice. You go over there.
there. Right? <laughs> it's one of the big events going on. It's not really. A, it's one of the few things that is not a race yeah, <laughs> going right. on this week over uh, around the Derby. It's uh, coming up on 610 each morning. We bring you weather and traffic together. And here's Officer Don with a look at what's happening early on the roads. Hey, Don. Conditions that could be a factor this morning, going to make things a little slick. So be careful on the way in. I had a look at traffic through the Todd's Road. You're back open there after that tragic yes, tragic yesterday, uh, but uh, they are going to let you through the area now. So just be extra careful. Let's get a look outside, and we'll show what's happening as far as times go on the Nicholasville, it's about normal. No major issues there. Coming in from Scott County, we're okay on 75 from Georgetown, and no problems across the Clays Ferry Bridge. Looking good 75 north and southbound this morning. Uh, we're good to we'll keep you up to date throughout the morning. Now back to the studio. Don, thank you very much. Uh, apologize for a little glitch there this morning. It happens. <laughs> Hit right? a couple of buttons. Yeah. We'll straighten that out. All right, 610 now, WKYT this morning on the air with all the latest. Much more news on the way on your Thursday. Yeah, the evacuation zone has expanded as a massive wildfire threatens to destroy an entire Canadian city. Black conditions are expected to get worse in three minutes. Also this morning, another ice cream recall. This time, it is a different problem for Bluebell. That and more on the way on WKYT. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. Your time is 614. A state of emergency is in effect as a massive wildfire threatens to destroy a city in Alberta, Canada. Now, this is an awful situation. 80,000 people have been forced to leave their homes. Henna Daniels now tells us authorities say that conditions are expected to get even worse. The inferno rages on, threatening to reduce the town of Fort McMurray to ashes. With a sudden shift in the winds last night, the fast-moving wildfire changed direction, fanning the flames and sending it towards the city center. The evacuation zone was expanded, and emergency crews went door-to-door, -door telling people to get out. Now you're sitting here, and all you see is red flames. It's, it's pretty scary. The fire has torched at least 1,600 homes and incinerated entire neighborhoods. Once I looked up, and basically it's raining ash, and, you know, your, your eyes are burning, you know, it's time to, to pack up and leave. Fort McMurray is surrounded by wilderness and the mix of unseasonably hot temperatures with dry conditions has transformed the forest into a tinderbox. Let's go, let's go. Uh, it's something like you'd see out of the movies. The, the bank was on fire when we were driving in. The, uh, the trailer park that was there is gone. The, the Super 8's gone. One of the gas stations is gone. More than 250 firefighters are battling the blaze. City leaders say crews saved the water treatment plant, but the blaze is moving in onto the airport, where all commercial flights have been suspended. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. Just amazing scene there. Deaths have been reported after a crash on a nearby highway, but police are not sure if it was related to the evacuation or to the fire. The Justice Department is warning North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory that the state could lose federal funds over its controversial bathroom law. The law limits the use of public restrooms to the gender on a person's birth certificate. Now, federal officials argue it violates the Civil Rights Act and is giving the state until Monday to comply. Johnny Manziel is expected to make his first courtroom appearance today after being indicted in a domestic violence case. The 23-year-old former Cleveland Browns quarterback will learn details of his release one day after he was booked into a Dallas area jail. The Heisman Trophy winner and former Texas A&M star was indicted by a grand jury last month after his ex-girlfriend alleged he hit her and threatened to kill her during a night out in January. Manziel is facing a Class A misdemeanor that carries up to a year in jail and a $4,000 fine. The Slotzilla in Las Vegas is a slot machine inspired zip line ride at the city's Fremont Street experience. But some recent visitors to Sin City have felt more inspired to hit the showers than to play the slots after a teenage rider reportedly showered uh, urine on the people below. Like a lot of liquid coming from up above us, just showering from head to toe, our back and top of the head dripping down, and we thought it was some sort of water, uh, maybe some drinks or beer. Well, it was some sort of water. Uh, Fremont Street's marketing director reportedly said the teen's parents have apologized for the nasty stunt. Well, that is disgusting. 
The time is 618. Bluebell is recalling more ice cream, but this time it's not because of Listeria. Some of the ice cream is mislabeled. Rocky Road packages are really cookies and cream. That flavor includes soy and wheat that's not listed on the boxes. Consumers with allergies could be at risk. The company says no illnesses have been reported. Fiat Chrysler and Google are teaming up to produce 100 self driving cars. The Chrysler Pacifica of minivans will be outfitted with Google sensors and software so the vans can drive themselves. The vehicles will be used to expand real world testing. And get ready to sing along to Apple Music. Apple is retooling its music streaming service, One Change Karaoke Style Lyrics. Apple is reportedly working with music labels to show the lyrics in real time. As the music plays, could be fun. Yeah, that could I be. I would sing uh, along. It'd be dangerous around here, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody enjoys it. <laughs> Six nineteen on WKYT this morning. We're just getting started with all the latest news. So good to have you with us, bright and early. He was one of the greatest to wear the blue and white. Details on the funeral today for former UK basketball player Ed Davender. We have some showers outside early this morning. It's going to cause a few problems there on the roadways. And then we head toward your next few days. Your next couple of days look great. I'll have that in your forecast coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. 622. Chilly out there this morning. Keep that in mind. You probably need a light jacket. Yeah, you're going to need a jacket, but it's yeah. going to get warmer, says right. Micah. So this morning, we're making calls to police to learn more about a deadly shooting in Knox County. That's what's trending at this hour. Investigators say they found a man shot to death in a home on Trace Branch Road in the Walker community. According to state police, the victim, 30 year old Shane Mills, was murdered. No arrests have been made yet. Police charged 23 year old Radiance Parker after they say she left her 23 month old son home alone. According to court documents, Parker admitted to leaving the toddler alone while she went to Wendy's. Police say she turned herself in two days later. And funeral services are today for former UK basketball standout Ed Davender. He died last week after suffering a massive heart attack. His funeral is at 1 o'clock this afternoon at First Baptist Bracktown in Lexington. Quick check of the weather forecast on this chilly morning. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris. All depends on where you are. It depends on the way it looks outside. Now we have some fog over toward Jackson there in eastern Kentucky, southeastern Kentucky at 41 degrees. Then look at Frankfurt. Frankfurt, it's a wet go at it. Anywhere west of I-75, you've had at least some rain out and about early this morning. So the roadways are pretty wet, uh, but Lexington coming in, uh, cloudy skies, a few sprinkles, a couple light showers here and there. And, and that's the look. It's not a lot of rain, but it's just enough to cause some problems early in the morning. When that rush hour gets going here in about an hour, that's when you'll start to see uh, some rainy conditions pick up and also uh, some of that travel slow down just a bit. So Got to keep that in mind. Prepare for that. 58 by the afternoon. We're going to be looking at on and off showers today. It's not a washout. Not widespread rain, but it's on and off. You will get breaks here and there. However, Friday looks great. Saturday looks fantastic, except for the evening and nighttime hours. We're going to be keeping a close eye out on that, guys. I'm going to be talking about the timing of these storms for the weekend coming up. Timing is everything, this one. <laughs> you know, yes, right? it is. Let's time it for yeah. later on Saturday. Right. right. A lot of people with a lot of big plans. It's 625 here in a couple of seconds. And around the world, revelers will be celebrating Cinco de Mayo today. You know what, though? The May 5th holiday is more popular in the U.S. than it actually is in Mexico. The event that inspired it is obscured by waves of margarita and tequila. The day commemorates Mexico's victory against the French during the Battle of Puebla in 1862. The Holidays Association with Drinking in the United States has earned it the nickname Cinco de Drinco. I did not know this. <laughs> Some of that goes on as well uh, <laughs> on a day like this, right? Yes, it does. After years of thinking about it, an Oklahoma man finally built his dream home that brings his passion for fishing right into his living room. <laughs> have to see this. Not the a bad idea. Three bedroom, three bath, two story house is built over a pond that Paul Phillips also built, <laughs> but he left a hole in the floor in the main room so that he can <laughs> okay. fish whenever he wants to. And now he's putting the house up for sale. The reason for that? Had so much fun doing it this time, I'm going to do it again, only bigger. <laughs> Hey, I say that's a big selling point. <laughs> Probably is. I mean, if you like to fish, why not? Fishing Don't pond have to leave in your, your house. Home. Yeah, exactly. Now he's going to build a bigger one. So well, there you go. Good for him. Good to have you along on WKYT this morning. Our news team very busy right now at 6:26, keeping you updated on all the latest. When WKYT this morning returns, more trouble for the UK women's basketball program. 
Find out who's leaving this time at 6.30. All of our top stories are coming right up. Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $138 million, and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot is climbed to $415 million. We'll be right back on WKYT This Morning.